It's that time of the year again. Google has officially released its flagship Google Pixel 8 Pro. Uh, and just a few weeks before that, we got the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is Apple's flagship phone. And every year we do a camera comparison. And this year, right now, you're watching it. This is the camera comparison between the Google Pixel 8 Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So starting off with the main sensor, and these are just standard still photos, point and shoot, no edits at all. Obviously, again, both cameras are gonna give you great photos. Uh, this is kind of always true with flagships, as we've said here in 2023, uh, but both phones do have some stylistic changes, some different color profiles, and just some differences overall. And so with Skylines here, this is where I've noticed this kind of category, the iPhone does produce some better HDR. We have better dynamic range. Uh, there's more of a natural look to the sky, and when it's really clear out there, like you see here, there are no clouds whatsoever, you do get a pretty balanced photo for the most part. However, the Pixel, it does kind of add its own thoughts on what the sky color should be. So here we have a much more bluish hue to the sky compared to the iPhone, which kind of has like it almost seems like it's being overexposed and just like too much dynamic range, but that's not the case because honestly, when you ask me which one is correct, the sky was kind of a mixture of both. It was a little bit white like what we had here, but not nearly as blue as what we have with the Pixel. It was a little bit of both kind of blending together. So going to have to pick which one you think you like the most when it comes to more of a cloudier day. So darker sky, darker clouds, the iPhone goes in that other direction. It emphasizes the lower portions of that contrast. And so you're kind of looking at the shadows and seeing that the clouds here are a lot darker. The pixels a little bit more neutral. It was a little bit more of that darker look for real life. So if I can recall correctly, it was just a couple days ago, actually. Uh, and so I'm going to give that kind of to the iPhone there in terms of what the clouds look like. And the rest of the photos are kind of the same. There are two different color temperatures going on for most pictures. The iPhone also tends to oversaturate a little bit. Here we have some taxis. I mean, the taxi was not nearly as yellow as it is in this photo with the iPhone. It was definitely more in line with what you got with the Pixel. So that was a little bit more natural, but I kind of like the more saturated look of those taxis and being a little bit more of that darker, more saturated yellow. Again, there were no edits made. Each phone does its own computational photography differently. And so this is what we get. Um, and that's, again, you're gonna see a lot of these photos here that this is just kind of what's happening. Both photos look amazing. I just, I don't think that any sensor uh, is bad. I think they're both great. It's just going to be a color temperature kind of a more, you know, what you prefer stylistically. But when you start to switch lenses, and this is where we're gonna go into the 5X telephoto lens because I think that's kind of the star of each camera, uh, but more so the iPhone because this is the first year that we have uh, 5X optical and um, now the Pixel also has 5X optical so we can finally compare those together. And again, most of the stuff that I talked about kind of carries over, uh, but the color profiles switch dramatically in some instances uh, compared to what we were just looking at with the main sensors. Again, it's always worth mentioning that both of these photos on their own are great, but I think I kind of lean towards the Pixel because I don't know what it is, but not the main sensor, but when you switch to the 5 or the 0.5X, which is the ultra wide, or you go to the telephoto lens, when you switch between those, I definitely notice an instance where the Pixel has a sharper photo and it could be the dynamic range might just be off um, where it kind of seems like the appearance of sharper photos when in reality it's not. Like when you look at the buildings and other textures, you kind of see that it's a little bit brighter, which makes my brain feel like it might be a little bit more sharp on the Pixel. And the iPhone tends to kind of make the subjects like those buildings and the ground and some of these other textures a little bit darker. It crushes that a little bit and it reduces is the clarity in my opinion. So if you're looking for a good example, this image of the lighthouse here, the clouds are better and more natural on the iPhone, but the rest is dark and it darkens the lighthouse and it makes it feel like it's less clear, less in focus when that's just not the case. It's just a sharper photo overall on the Pixel. And so I tend to kind of prefer that over what we get on the iPhone. But again, both photos are really, really good. The iPhone does offer 5X portraits, and now this is where I kind of say I don't think it's fair, mostly just because I think I prefer the portraits uh, on the iPhone in general, but the 5X 
telephoto portraits, that 120 millimeter focal length giving you portrait mode just looks so much better. And also it's not a fair fight because the Pixel only has a one and a half and two X portrait. So you're not getting telephoto portraits. And that's a shame because I really think that Google could do some damage here, but right now it's up to the iPhone and the iPhone is delivering when it comes to portrait mode uh, with the 5X telephoto. So I can't really show you a comparison of the 5X portraits that I get on the iPhone compared to the Pixel because it just doesn't exist. So I hope you're enjoying these 5X portraits on the iPhone, but here we now have portrait mode just kind of in general between the iPhone and the Pixel. And I still kind of lean towards the iPhone with what I like. The lenses are different. The focal length is different. I kind of had to position these photos so that they were sort of close, but you can just tell uh, that the Pixel is a little bit wider in some instances or a little bit closer in some instances. So it just kind of depends on what your preference is here. So to wrap that up a little bit, just it's not fair to compare the 5X telephoto portraits to the Pixel because, uh, well, I, you just can't, it doesn't exist. But it's also not fair for me to say that the Pixel has better portraits because I just don't prefer that. And also when I do portraits on the iPhone, I'm almost exclusively trying to make it work with that 5X telephoto lens because I just think it's the better lens. When it comes to night photos in general, obviously with the portrait here, I really did like the portraits coming out of the Pixel, but in just other lower light situations, uh, I do lean the iPhone here because um, it doesn't bring up the shadows as much as the Pixel does. So you do get a much brighter photo. It does a better job on the Pixel to make a dark situation brighter, but that doesn't always make the photo better. And so that's a quick explanation. Um, it's kind of been like that over the few last few years between these two phones. And so I prefer the iPhone when it comes to night photos just because it's more natural but Pixel does a better job of illuminating the entire image. When it comes to video, this is usually also another short subject because I kind of just feel like nothing ever comes close to the iPhone's video capabilities. And I kind of still feel that way. Um, I think both phones are pretty close when it comes to just generic 4K 24 or 30 frames per second. Uh, but I still just think that the iPhone has a better look and feel to its photos. I'm, I'm sorry, to its videos uh, compared to just about any other camera. And then Apple introduced ProRes Log with the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max uh, or Apple Log as some are calling it. And it gives you a flat image that you can then go into your editor and add custom LUTs and color correct to your liking. And that's not gonna be something that everybody here watching this video will do, but I really like that. And so I am biased towards the iPhone in that sense because I can take more control over what my image looks like with my videos, make it feel more cinematic than what you can with Google's videos. But when it comes to just standard point and shoot, they're both fine in terms of the image point of view, but I just kind of still feel like I like the video quality more on the iPhone. Um, and so that is our main conclusion when it comes to the camera. Um, again, it's been a week. I haven't taken nearly as many photos as I would in the next like few months. So maybe if you want a long-term review, we can do that. But I think the photos on both phones are great. It's been like this for years. It's kind of always like this when you pin it up against each other. I think I'm now leaning towards the iPhone as just the overall better camera system, especially when you tie video into that. Uh, and again, I'm in love with the 5X portraits that you get. So in my opinion, I'm just leaning towards that at the end of the day. This is definitely not a bias thing because how many times have I gone with the Pixel? I just think now it's Apple's time to shine just a little bit more. However, there are features that the Pixel has that the uh, iPhone does not have, and Apple just does not currently offer, at least built into its own system. You can probably download an app that might come close, but I don't think that's what we're trying to accomplish here. So if you're on the fence, uh, maybe these AI features from Google will actually help you sway your opinion one way or another, because I think it kind of makes me wish that I could do this on my iPhone. So the first one is called Best Take. And if you're a parent out there who's tried to take pictures of your kids and get them all to look at the camera at the same time, you know that this is usually impossible unless they're having a great day in which they're all listening and smiling and looking at you. But nine times out of 10, that's not happening uh, at the same time for one specific photo. It's always a hodgepodge collection of kid A is smiling, kid C is not, kid B is not even looking at you. Well, in this best take feature, you can go into your tools, click on best take. It'll gather all of those similar images together. And then you'll have the ability to go here at the bottom and click on each kid's face and find the best 
you know, facial expression that they offered in those collection of photos and magically change it so that everyone in the one photo is actually uh, making a good face and quote unquote, giving you their best take. And I tried it out with my kids here. It's not a great photo by any means. I kind of specifically wanted to catch them at a crazy time, which is always usually right before bedtime. So they're getting ready to go to bed and you can just see here that no one's paying attention in any of these images. But if I turn on best take, you can see that I can now change the face of each kid so that it looks like they were all just listening to my directions and smiling. And that's amazing. There's also another amazing feature here called Magic Editor. Now, Google has had Magic Eraser for a few years where you can kind of remove things and, you know, depending on what you're doing, you might not get that weird blur that you definitely removed an object, but, you know, you can see the limitations of Magic Eraser, but with Magic Editor, you can remove an entire car, an entire person that might be covering up another object, and it'll use generative AI to fill in those spots without making it we look weird or like blurry or just distorted. So generative AI can now fill those spots where an entire car might be, or in this case, I have my sunglasses specifically on the table and I want it to be removed, but I don't want the table to get that warped look to it. I want it to be a natural kind of bamboo or oak or whatever this material was, I don't remember, but generative AI, I just tap on the sunglasses and it removes it and adds in this perfect image of what the table might have looked like underneath those sunglasses. And also in the example that Google showed me during the event, you can see here, uh, there's this little girl on a beach. Uh, we can tap on her, go ahead and resize her, put her in a different part of the photo to make it look she's like more front and center than in reality where she was kind of in the background. We now put her in that foreground, generative AI fills in the rest of it, and we can then go ahead and change the skyline, make that a golden hour look. We can change a lot to the photo. In reality, it might be a little divisive of a conversation because you're kind of blurring the lines of like, well, that picture wasn't natural, so is it really a good photo? That's up for a different conversation for a different day. But I just think that if you are in a pinch and you want that picture to be a little bit better, you can make some pretty some pretty crazy changes. And then there is Audio Magic Eraser, which Google had Magic Eraser for photos like we talked about. Now in videos, you have the ability to use Audio Magic Eraser where you can remove sounds entirely or be uh, turning up sounds if you want to or turning them down. It just, it can identify the sounds in your video. So in this video, we have a uh, person playing a cello out in the streets of New York. Now in the background, you don't see it, but there's a fire truck coming by and it's blaring sirens. And so you can go in, identify those sounds, and then you can dial it down to your perfect mix that you want for your video. It's pretty crazy stuff. And these features alone, again, might be worth picking up the Pixel over the iPhone, especially if you are taking a lot of family photos or just group photos where you're just never getting the right look from each person. You can go ahead and change it. And as creepy as it might be, it does get the job done. So would love to hear from you in the comments down below. What are you thinking about these photos and about these Pixel features specifically? Is it enough to get you switched from an iPhone or are you considering, just let me know in the comments down below what you think. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.